is a video basically for YouTube staff because I think I've got a guy that's complaining on my account and it's specifically towards the composting area that I put together and the compost that I made and the compost that I'm using now to grow garden crops and according to this fellow there's no way that finished compost can grow plants because the compost is action is still occurring and it's too hot and the plants roots burn so uh, I'm gonna show you what's going on here in my composting area and I'll add it to the long string of uh, composting videos I have in a playlist a series and the place where he actually gave me the uh, the most flack is on composting flip number 13 so uh, check that out too. The reason why I think he complained is because now YouTube has limited the advertising that can be played on that on that video. So I put two and two together. Here's a guy that did a lot of complaining or did some pretty specific complaining and uh, then I got limited. So here it is. This is the composting area. Look at all the plants that are growing. And if you can kind of remember I built two beds you can find it in that playlist when I built those two beds. Here they are. That's pure compost. That's the compost that I distributed. Now he does have a point that if I would have left it in a pile, it would have stayed hot and it probably would have burnt the roots. Although I've got some tomatoes growing, or some watermelon growing in a pile right now that's pretty hot. Um, most of these plants probably would have died. But uh, what I did was is I distributed it into these beds and it's, and it's only a couple inches thick. And to have compost get that hot, you definitely have to have body, you have to have some height to it. So it stopped composting once I put it in these beds. And now look at the growth. And in these pots of potatoes, that's pure compost too. That's the stuff I sifted. I do have a mixture, some of them is a hundred percent of that compost and some of it is a hundred percent is a mixture of 50 50 of compost from last year which definitely is finished and, uh, and compost from this year that wasn't so since I'm on the topic I might as well go through everything what's growing I put together this little cedar fence wall and I filled that with compost most of it is last year's but I have some of this year's on the top as a top dressing and there's a nice little, oh, I think they call it night sky or something, petunia. I bought that at a farmer's market. And then we have potatoes in behind and underneath these tomatoes. The tomatoes I'm going to be trellising up. And I'll keep clipping the lower branches off so that the potatoes get sunshine. And we have uh, five tomatoes in here. And I had another guy complain. He said, oh, you're planting tomatoes too close together. They're going to get diseased and they're not going to grow any tomatoes. Well, I've done this before. It works mainly because of the soil that I'm producing here with the compost. That's, I'm not doing this scientifically. That's just my opinion. So uh, I can tell you it's working. And then I had a couple of volunteer beans that popped up. I actually put a trellis here and it sat here all winter with bean pods on it. Those beans must have fell to the ground and it came up even after I added about, about 8 or 10 inches of, uh, of compost. It came up through all of that. So I got a trellis for it too. There's another one in the back so there's two plants. <laughs> I think that's pretty neat. Continue along this line here are my pots of potatoes and I've got small pots with one single potato plant growing. I got larger plot, uh, pots with uh, anywhere from three to I think eight potato plants growing. This one here I actually put a tomato plant in with it. So there's a tomato and a potato in that pot. These are look these look really nice. I think this is a potato I got from Okio. So I, I mix everything up. I never know what anything is. I just determine what it is when I harvest it. And if it's a good harvest and it's a nice, everything is nice with it, then I'll save it for for seed. If there's some blemish, something I don't like about it, I eat it. So these are all pots. All of them. And then I got potatoes over here. This was a bed that I just threw here because I, I had ex excess 
uh, compost and I was thinking well I don't know what I'm going to plant in here because it's dense shade it gets a couple hours of sun in, at the most in the afternoon late afternoon so here we'll show you what's growing we got some peppers that are just getting hammered by slugs but they're they're flowering and I got some potatoes here I don't remember planting any potatoes in here so uh, must have been in this little section right here is just soil that was here and then from there on out from that rock over that's all compost so I don't know it must have been in that soil I didn't grow any here last year of course my memory is fading so who knows I'm getting old right so these are um, pine berries <laughs> and they want full sun well here they are growing in almost full shade and I've been picking strawberries off of it so they're producing there's one here. Oh, that don't look too great. Looks like something's been eaten on it. And then I've got some squash plants in here in the shade that aren't doing as well as the ones that are in the, in the sun, obviously. They probably won't make a crop, but let's find out. I never grew that squash before. It's called Honey Baby. And I've got some back here along the fence that are in very deep shade, too. And they're very small. This is one of my best mouse trap trail sets right here. I caught a lot of mice and a lot of holes out of that. I think I've uh, seriously damaged the population. So here's the larger bed. These here are candy onions and peppers. And we've got a pepper growing and we're almost in, in full shade here. I mean, a couple hours of sun in the afternoon, late afternoon, that's it. Growing a pepper. We've got some basil. And let's look at these peppers here they have much less slug damage because I think this terrain here is really hard for slugs we still have all that wood shavings in here that didn't fully compost and I think that's tough for those slugs to get through but if we grow let's go down a little bit and we'll see what's going under here I haven't done this yet see it's breaking down oh there that's what we want the worms the worms are what makes us fertilizer for our plants. That looks like a, a baby um, night crawler. So they're in here finishing that compost just like I said in that video. And as they finish the compost they're making food for our crops. Boy that basil looks nice and healthy too. So anyways I want to show you. You can see there's much less slug damage if hardly any. I don't even know if that might not be a slug right there. That might be some other bird type of critter. Then we come over here away from the compost and we look at these peppers and look at that they're just hammered so we come along here and got more candy onions I planted uh, basil in here there's a couple plants I planted and I put seeds in I haven't seen very many basil seed plants coming up but I've got a lot of cilantro uh, basil and cilantro are going to be ingredients to the salsa that I'm going to make out of these tomatoes and peppers oh look at Remember I talked about in that playlist in that video series, one of those videos, I talked about those honey locust beans. There's one coming up right there. So this is a bonus because it's hard to sprout honey locust seeds. I got another video about uh, from last year, I think I did the same thing. And I've been experimenting with the timing because sometimes the timing, I think I was putting them in there too early and most of the seeds or the beans were being uh, digested by the compost well you just want to heat them up so I put them in a little late and this is this will be the, I think the fifth one though that's come up the other four I've already transplanted into pots that's too close to that pepper so it'll have to grow there we have more cilantro basil peppers pepper blossoms these are all candy onions now here I seeded a whole bunch of set onions. I had them extra and set onions will grow very well even though it's middle of July. We'll get a good crop of those yet. And come in a couple more potato pots. I had uh, a bed here too and, and it was kind of thin. And I thought well you know what I got extra pots here and I need some more room. I want to get them in here because this is a protected area from deer and I ended up taking that thinner part of the bed. I harvested the onions and ate them 
And then, uh, then there were onions like this, you know. They had a little bulb to them. You can see they're starting to bulb up a little bit. They had a little bulb to them, so there were something to eat. And then I took that excess material from the bed there, and I actually filled this pot over here. Oh, I'm talking about honey locust seeds. Here's here's a pot right there, so you can see that's what I put into the compost. You can see that in one of those videos of the playlist. And we're coming here to the end. I I took one of those honey baby squash that were growing in the deep shade and wasn't. I mean, it was just a tiny little plant, and I put it here. And it's still not getting a lot of sun, but it's getting more, and you can see it's responding. And here I got a little um, a gill going or. Uh, testing of a companion planting of Achira, which is a South American plant with corn, which is, I don't know if it's a South American plant or that's a North American plant, but why wouldn't they grow together? Let's find out. And that's paradise seed corn that comes from uh, Joseph Lofthouse. I think he's over there in Utah. He's doing this land race stuff. So, so far, so good. And we got a couple flowers. Got to have some flowers, right? And we're coming to the opposite side of the larger bed. Look at that chira. This is an edible canna. That's a nice looking plant too. But I never had them flower. So here we have a lineup of tomatoes. And these are all weird tomatoes. I bought them from a young fellow over at the farmer's market. And he had little tags on them here on his little pots. And I was going to write it down. I never wrote it down. And now it's faded. So I don't know what's what anymore. But um, along with the tomatoes, I'm growing Elsa Craig onions, and I, and I seeded more cilantro and basil seeds in here. You'll see that along with the onions. But look at this tomato. It's really very healthy coming out of that compost. There's one that's kind of weak looking. We'll get to that one. Here's another one that's very healthy. We're definitely going to have tomatoes. I got a lot of bumblebees around because of all the diverse plantings I have. Get plenty of food for bumblebees, so they'll be here. You get more tomatoes if you have bumblebees around. Oh, this side probably should have cut off. Is there any flowers growing on it? I don't see any blossoms on it, so I'll probably have to get my clippers and clip that off of there. People call those suckers. So, and I, I'm doing the same thing here. I'm clipping these, the lower branches off as they grow. You see this one here is a prime example. I want the foliage to be up here to the top of this hog panel and then up along the way I want the tomatoes. If you keep the plant the branches away from the soil you know hopefully you avoid the the wilt or any of the funguses or whatever that I like to grow on tomatoes. And you can look at this there, there really aren't that many weeds in here because as you do that composting method that you know the bacteria Oh, here's a stem that I didn't pick up. As you do that bacteria and that heat, the heated bacteria in the pile, it eats all those weed seeds. So here's, a, here's the one that isn't doing so, that well. I don't know why, maybe it's supposed to have just little bitty leaves. But we're just going to let it go, see what happens. Sometimes they just, just bring to life. So this is a potato leaf tomato. I guess that does look like a potato leaf. Oh, here we got a basil plant coming. That's from seed. I don't see any more. Do I? Gotta look backwards. You know, this one might be. It might be a basil. Okay, so some of them's coming up. I just did surface sowed them, so you know that's they have a little diff more difficult time then. Cilantro's doing good here. Some more blossoms. I think every one of them, except for that sick one, has got blossoms. This is a big boy growing here on almost shade. Look at it. Well, it's probably getting half day sun anyway. This one here is right, getting the worst. This is an apricot tree branch right here. Then we have a lineup of uh, squashes. Got these honey babies. I watered this this morning and it kind of fell over, so I'm going to have to get some more sticks here and maybe tie it up. I'll come back at that. And then I got some Joseph Lofthouse squashes in here. He was just talking about it the other day. They were typing about it on the internet. The type of squash that he's growing. This is this is one of his plants right here. It's gonna have to hurry up and get up above the rest of these. Bruscata squash, I think he called it. 
I got these from a lady in, uh, in Upper Michigan. And it said Joseph Lothaus on the on the package. <laughs> I got them way back in like 2014 or 2015. Yeah. I can't hear you. So I have to edit out. And there's some more Joseph Lofthouse seeds right there. They're growing up pretty high. We got this cattle panel here growing up into the, the wooden fence here so we can climb up that. And here's the smaller bed. And I've got uh, candy onions planted on the east side, carrots in the center, and leeks on the west side. We'll slowly walk up this. Um, this portion of the bed gets more shade than sun, and this portion of the bed gets more sun than shade. And actually, kind of, and I don't think it's even, but um, this part of the bed gets shade in the morning, sun in the afternoon, and this one is in reverse. Gets shaded in the afternoon. And these leeks are just the weirdest things. They're falling over. They're curling up, so I'm staking leeks. <laughs> It's funny. And I got this volunteer tomato that came up. So I staked it up, we'll let her grow, we'll see what happens. Some volunteer ground cherries. And this is a wall of tomato volunteers. I'm letting them all grow together, see what happens. Behind them is a zucchini. And there's a... Uh, some Asian squash that the roots are back there but it's coming it's growing all the way over here now and I'm gonna trellis it up the hog panel that I've tied up here and then that final bed that actually had climbing beans and climbing peas planted in it and the slugs just ate them alive we had a lot of rain in the in spring and early summer and um, <laughs> there's one bean here that's climbing that's it just that right there. You see it going up that stick I stuck in there. That's the only one. And I probably planted 20, 20 bean seeds in here. So then what I did was I had uh, skirret growing from the seed that was produced last year and I transplanted it over to this bed. And that's what's growing right, right below the hog panel here. See, so I'll probably go over and get a close up. So here's the bean seed. That's the sole bean that made it past the slugs. So I view that as a pretty special bean bean there. But this is the skirt. And then growing here more in the shade. Then we're coming out here where it's sun, and I haven't watered this. I'm doing a test to find out which will grow without a lot of water. Without a lot of care. And then that one I'm going to allow to go to seed. And grow some more out of that one. So that's the plan. You can see back here where there's a little more shade, they're taller, so they're responding because it's probably not as dry, and over here it's pretty dry. And they're a lot smaller. So at some point, you know, if they're starting to really die, I'll water them just to get a crop on them, but I won't let them go to seed. This one here probably is the best one right now. Looks very healthy. And it's not not in the shade in the morning. I got some pawpaws and there's some back here. I might just let them grow here. I actually planted 25 along here, little bitty tiny seeds, and I, there's only four of them that made it this far. There's a lot against little tree seedlings. And not many have what it takes. I don't know, somewhere I read it's one seed out of every how many tens of thousands that actually grow to maturity. When you think about it, the trees grow a lot of seeds. And we have one final part here. I'll get back here in the shade. Now these are old bee boxes. And I put them up against this wall here and it's, it's a lot warmer against the wall as it's facing the sun. And I've been, I, I think this is the third, might be the fourth year I've done this now with tomatoes where I trellis them up this wall. You can see the, the cord. It's a straw bale string. 
And last year I had them growing up 15 feet. <laughs> I got a picture of me on a ladder picking tomatoes. Uh, but I'm going to do the same thing this year. And also in the box are, are potatoes. This one has got a couple onions. And peppers. I'm not sure the peppers are going to do that well because they're pretty shaded. But, you know, as the tomatoes grow, I'm clipping, going to be clipping off the bottom stems. So at some point they'll start getting sun. These potatoes, they're kind of leaning out over the box. So they'll give the peppers some sun as well. And here I've got a overhanging hazelnut bush. You can see we've got hazelnuts. We've got lots of hazelnuts. Look at that. Lots and lots and lots. That's the third year in a row this bush has gone nuts. If you get what I mean. It's really hanging down. There must be big, heavy ones here. That's pretty cool. That's a good use for the space. And then there's one more thing. I also put some onion sets in along this wall here. And there's, there's sprouting. Look at that. There's sprouting. But I got to water, so this dries out really fast. I gotta pay attention. So here it is. Here's the update. We're back to where we started. This is a full tour of the composting area that I convert to a main crop garden every year. And you, if you go back prior years, I've got uh, since 2013, I've got composting videos up, and probably it's 2015 that. I started to work on this part of my yard as you know I got a design here and I've got ideas going forward and I'm developing them as I go it's just me I don't have any help I'm not getting any volunteers over here nothing it's just me and I'm just doing it very slow and it's helping me to think along the way you know strategic thinking is a lot different a lot higher level than logistical thinking and when you do strategic thinking that takes some time you, you gotta develop ideas you got to think about well, how will these ideas play out into the future? And you can see how this composting area has been developing. So uh, if you go back in time, and last year was the first year I had it fully developed, and this is a, the second year. Last year I had a bunch of circle beds in here, and it was pretty chaotic and very productive. But hard to walk around in it because it was just so much and it was so tight. Well, this year with the beds, and the beds, the part of this was to demonstrate a double reach bed, which you can't reach across the entire bed. You have to go to one side of the bed to reach into the middle, the other side of the bed to get, get to the middle, and then a single reach bed, which I can reach all the way across the whole bed. Let's kind of demonstrate that. And it's working out very well. So uh, there you have it. Mr. YouTube, take off that limited advertising off that composting video number 13, please. Otherwise, the rest of you, thanks a lot for watching.